if you don't agree on definitions for words, you're going to have two different conversations. Yeah. Feelings are a reliable way to discover truth. <laughs> well, in some domains, you know, if you're talking about a love affair, uh, yeah, that's that's important. <laughs> if if I feel like my love partner uh, is is faithful is is the <laughs> feeling a reliable way to know if they really are? Um, you know, I've become a much better judge of character over the years than <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> so I would say when you're 22, uh, that may not be such a good guide. <laughs> but uh, mm. with years of experience, it might be a better guide, but it certainly isn't 100% that she could be extremely devious, you know. Mm. But then the question becomes is, how could I get involved with somebody and not notice how devious they are? It must be some lack in my own uh, perception. Mm -hmm. Your level of awareness. Yeah. Um, so would it be fair to say that the reliability of feelings gets higher as you get older? Uh, if you're paying attention, Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't grow at all. A lot of people just basically cease growing by, when they get out of college or high school or something or shortly thereafter. But if you continue to grow and question and think, uh, hopefully you're going to get better at evaluating things. Hmm. Well, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I feel like I'm... Yeah, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at evaluating people in, in mm -hmm. situations. You know, I mean, I can still be wrong, obviously, but, but uh, you know, generally, I, I think I'm much better at it now than I was when I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. I guess the way I see this is I, I would prefer to use a different method other than feelings if I need to know if something's accurate or not. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't want to rely so. I mean, obviously, there's all sorts of other things going on, too. That, uh -huh. You know, not just feelings. I mean, that's one of the things that that we have available, mm -hmm. but certainly not the only one or even necessarily the best one in many circumstances. Why is it not the best one? Well, because there are others. I suspect we should use every channel that's available to us. Mm hmm. Why would I limit myself, you know, emotions versus intellect? Oh, they're both crucial. You know, it's not yeah. one or the other. They're both there and they should both be consulted, I think. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there, there are, in certain situations, there are more reliable ways to tell if something's accurate other than feelings? Oh, sure. Okay. Feelings may be totally irrelevant in some cases, like like that that wire around the earth. I was absolutely mm -hmm. convinced that that was, you know, you know. It was but, based on a feeling. Well, I certainly didn't have any data or anything because I just he, they, they, he laid out the scenario and told me what I was, and I just immediately said, "Well, that's bullshit. That can't be." Yeah. <laughs> I had no basis for that in any intellectual thing. You know, I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Well, that I think that's what street epistemology tries to explore is, you know, are we using 
the most reliable way that's available to tell if this conclusion I yeah. have is accurate. Or any way at all. My sense is most people don't really seriously evaluate much of anything. Yeah. Um, for any way. I mean, except maybe emotionally, they like something or they don't like something. But the idea of looking at evidence and thinking about it and considering other alternatives. And I, I don't think many people actually go through a process like that. Mm -hmm. Would you prefer that they did? Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, that's, that's, um, that's what street epistemology is doing. Like yeah. we're, yeah. we're, we're offering, we're offering people to take a look at this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it probably pisses a bunch of people off too. <laughs> well, it depends on, it depends on how you go about it. Like yeah. Yeah. with my situation in, in, in excessive <laughs> rapport building, um, you know, I, I, I think that there, I think you can do it in a compassionate way. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, well, that's why I, uh, I like street epistemology. <laughs> that's why, you know, I've been following it for some time. Yeah. What's the, Magna Bosco is the guy who started this stuff, isn't it? The application of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the application of it in real life and 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 uh, creating examples that other people can uh, use to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's good stuff. And and you're right. You, it's probably better to be overly friendly <laughs> and mm -hmm. less confrontational, and and accept. I mean, maybe you could push people a little harder, but you know that that might that may turn off a few, you know, well, it's just, yeah, you have to draw the line every time, you know, as to how far can you push somebody mm -hmm. or, you know, or lead them or, or whatever. Yeah. 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 We talked a little bit about this before where I prefer it to be in person so that I have an easier yeah. time reading yeah, their body the language. comfort level. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. The twitches in their arms or their brows or something. All sorts. Or how of they stuff. cross yeah. their arms, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. This would be ah, that see, because I normally prefer just what we're doing, but yeah, uh, I can see how in the situation you're talking about, being in their presence gives you all sorts of cues that uh, that wouldn't be available like we're doing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Heron, uh, we've we've gone through half the survey. Twelve, we've done twelve statements out of the twenty-four. Um, this might be a good time to maybe pause, and sure. we can maybe yeah, tackle the second half sometime. Sure, yeah, that'd be cool. This is fun, so uh, I'd enjoy that. Awesome. I don't yeah, know how I'm, useful this is for you, though. I mean, uh, I mean, you're used to doing this stuff with people who have definite beliefs about things. And I'm curious how, how this works for you, talking to somebody like me. Well, I think you, I think you nailed it. Um, it's different talking to you because you see the world differently than a lot of the people that I talk to. So this help, this is extremely helpful for me because it gives me a chance to think about things in a way that I haven't really thought about before because of the difference in what I normally run into versus you. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad this is useful for you too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it, it's useful to have as many perspectives as I can, as I can be exposed to. I yeah. think. Yeah, I agree. Um, and if it's okay with you, um, I might do like a video series of, of this. Um, but I would definitely need your okay for that. 
Yeah. What do you mean? Like on Zoom or something or what? Mm, no, I was thinking of, well, you know how you said that you've seen some videos of me and my um, British buddy going yeah. through the survey? Yeah. I mean, I could easily do the same thing with what with our conversation here. I can I can make like just little small episodes of each statement or maybe Oh, two. I see. Okay, there won't be any video involved in it though. It's just audio. I mean, all, all we've got here is audio. So Right. Right. And a lot of my Clubhouse uploads, I'll use um the other person like I'll have a guest uh you know this because you were one of them um i'll use their icon that they have either on their youtube channel or whatever as as the video yeah um yeah i'm up you know. yeah listen you can do whatever you want with this stuff that that's fine with me okay yeah no um problem. do you have i've already used your icon on a on other on a the other one that we had um, do, do you have, do you, I guess I'm offering you to give me a image <laughs> that I could use it, um, or I can just pick something. Did you, have you ever seen the, the image I chose for our last one-on-one? -on -one? Not, mm -hmm. not the, not the clubhouse room where you were a guest, but when we explored the claim about, um, our uh, language machine affecting our behavior and, and stress level? Uh, no. So it's, uh, it's a split screen of two monkeys talking on the phone. <laughs> okay. Well, take a look at the picture, I, PTR, and you'll see. You can use this picture. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's just some guy, some, you know, brain damaged language monkey. <laughs> um, I'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, yeah, I'll, I'll look forward to, um, the second going through the second half. Yeah. Uh, sometime soon. Yeah, me too. It's, that's been fun. Awesome. And again, you know, that, if you're interested in that uh, hidden claim, that should be my first one in, in my profile on replays. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Oh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me. Oh, hidden. Yeah. It's, it's hidden claim is in the name. Okay, good. Yeah. I see it there. Okay. Yeah. And who was the guy you were talking to? His name's Jeff. Okay, yeah, the first guy there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds... And you reveal the claim at the end, right? Yeah, and I said, it doesn't matter if you reveal it or not. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, that sounds kind of interesting. I, I may actually listen to that. I make no promises, though. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's there if you want it. It's yeah. not a big deal. Um, but it, it it's there if you're uh, interested yeah. in how that went. Yeah, okay. Cool, well, Heron. Yeah, David, I, I've enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to the second half. Yeah, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in uh, some other rooms, too. Well, I drop in and out occasionally, as you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, have a good evening. Sounds good. You as well. Take care.